Welcome to Television City News. I'm Bianca Martins. It's great to have you with us. In this week's bulletin, commuters get a glimpse of stations on the North West Rail Link, Penrith Council outlines its future transport needs and the Western Sydney musician starting a new social trend. But first, an independent report has found the flooding of properties at Londonderry earlier this year was unfortunate but inevitable. Some seven centimetres of rain fell in 30 minutes during the February deluge, flooding several properties in the area. Penrith Council commissioned an independent report looking into the causes of the floods as well as potential mitigation works to reduce flooding in the future. The review found extreme weather conditions and unauthorised filling were major contributors to the flooding. The Council is now calling for community feedback on the findings. Commuters have had a glimpse of what the North West Rail Link's eight new stations will look like. The second environmental impact statement for the project has been released, showing station designs, commuter car parking facilities and transport interchanges. Northwest commuters currently battling the daily gridlock can look forward to travelling from Rouse Hill to the city in less than an hour, while a trip from Kellyville to Macquarie Park will be about 24 minutes. The plans also show commuter parking for 4,000 cars with park and ride facilities at five stations. While the track corridor from Rouse Hill to Cherrybrook remains fixed, the public has until December 3 to comment on the plans. Penrith Council has delivered a submission outlining its integrated transport needs to the state government. Mayor Mark Davies handed over the council's submission for the government's long-term transport master plan on Tuesday, saying integrated transport is very important to the region's half a million people. It's a growing area and the pressures on transport are increasing every, every year. And it's about having a transport system that connects the, air, the, the various areas around our city and the region together in, in, in the Penrith. Former Penrith councillor turned Malgoa MP Tanya Davies and Penrith MP Stuart Ayres were on hand to receive the council submission on behalf of the government. As a former councillor seeing it from a local level to now at the state, state level I can bring that local knowledge and understanding of what Penrith needs into the state government. But what the master plan is really about is ensuring that we've got the priority of lists right across Western Sydney in the right order. So when those funds do become available we invest them where we know we're going to get best value for our dollar. The submission addressed issues including improved bus services to developing areas the Penrith to Sydney CBD Express Rail Service and a safe crossing for cyclists and pedestrians over the Nepean River. Cabramatta's top cop says he's disappointed at Fairfield Council's decision to remove live monitoring of security cameras from the area's central business district. Superintendent Wayne Murray says police have been denied the chance to state their case for the cameras in Cabramatta and fears crime rates will increase once they're gone. But Deputy Mayor Lawrence White lashed out at the officer's response and says Superintendent Murray should use the available resources to keep the streets safe. A report to Parramatta Council says the city's Rivercat ferries are destroying the waterways banks and retaining walls. The Rivercats were supposedly designed so their wash did not do any more damage than regular waves. But the report recommends replacing the Rivercat fleet as soon as possible. The report says the problem is worse around Parramatta, where river cat wash is the main cause of bank slumping and mangrove loss. Camden's dog lovers are urging people to play it safe following a number of attacks at the Eldersley Dog Park. Several owners have reported problems with unleashed dogs at the park and urged Camden Council to enforce the guidelines. Council spokesman Jeff Green says owners are fined if their dog attacks another dog or a human. He says the park is patrolled and the sign listing rules and regulations will be installed. Quick thinking by an eight-year-old girl has helped save the life of her Hoxton Park mother. Alison McPherson has type 1 diabetes and on October 25 went into a diabetic coma, collapsing and spending two hours fighting for her life on the kitchen floor. After putting a pillow under her mother's head, daughter Carmen ran for help to her nearby grandparents' house. Ambulance paramedics arrived within minutes and it took an hour before Miss McPherson regained consciousness. They said it was Carmen's detailed description of what happened and her thorough knowledge of her mother's medical history that assisted with Alison's treatment. Blacktown residents can now use smartphones and tablet devices to report crime. 
Crime Stoppers Chief Executive Peter Price says information about criminal activity as well as photos and videos can be sent anonymously with high-end encryption methods ensuring it's received in confidence. Police believe the idea of reporting crime via a handheld phone will appeal to young people. Of course, residents can still send information to crimestoppers.com.au or call 000 for a crime in progress. Badgerys Creek landowners say they are sick of decades-old development restrictions imposed on them because of where they live. Owners can't build on vacant blocks or extend their properties because they live next door to the land earmarked for development by the government 30 years ago. A recent report recommended Badgerys Creek should be developed as Sydney's second airport by 2027. But residents say they no longer care what the federal government does with the site as long as land development restrictions are lifted. A southwestern Sydney school reunion will be featured in a documentary based on a 1973 project by acclaimed director Peter Weir. More than 60 ex-Ashcroft High School students attended the reunion at Mount Pritchard on Saturday night where scenes were shot for the new documentary looking at life in Green Valley. 40 years ago Peter Weir made a documentary called Whatever Happened to Green Valley and I thought it'd be interesting to see what happened to Green Valley. Um, where did the people go who were in the documentary? Did they survive? Um, just where are they now? The original documentary saw Green Valley residents like Wayne Emerson record their everyday lives on camera and the new production crew followed Mr Emerson as he caught up with classmates he hadn't seen since high school. As part of the documentary we're looking for as many of the original filmmakers uh, that we can find. Uh, we found a few uh, but we're after anyone who uh, has been involved with the film um, or anyone who knows anyone who's been involved. Maybe it was their, um, you know, their grandparents or, um, or parents uh, or even somebody who lived down the street. The new documentary will be broadcast on TVS in 2013. President Benigno Aquino III has visited Rose Meadows Rizal Park to unveil a five metre tall brass statue of Filipino freedom fighter Jose Rizal. It's believed to be the first time an international head of state has visited Campbelltown. Mayor Sue Dobson says the statue is a towering symbol of the strong ties between Campbelltown and the Philippines. Campbelltown's Filipino community campaigned for the statue for more than 10 years. There's a new voice for workers in Blacktown. Blacktown Community Unions has been launched to fight for secure jobs and workplace rights. The group will represent some 15 unions. Unions New South Wales Secretary Mark Lennon says the group promotes the interests of working people during a time of economic insecurity and state government attacks on workplace rights. More than 80 people have attended a forum to discuss ideas to improve Riverston. The forum heard community spirit is an asset to developing the town with more recreation facilities, beautification of the main street and making more use of Riverston's historic buildings, among other suggestions to improve the area. Riverston Neighbourhood Centre spokesperson Jessica Horan says local businesses will thrive with more recreational facilities to make people happy. The biggest competitive international film festival ever staged in Australia has been held in Sydney. Films from 15 countries were competing for awards at the inaugural Cockatoo Island Film Festival that took place over five days from October 24. The festival featured workshops, performances and screenings of 200 short films, feature films and documentaries. Director Peter Weir was on hand to present a workshop with renowned composer Burkhard Daltwitz discussing their collaboration on films including The Truman Show and The Way Back. More than two years planning went into the event, which was expected to attract 40,000 people. Our vision is that it's going to be an event on the calendar, annually celebrated, that a lot of people come to, especially, and, and also not just across Australia, but from all over the world. Paraguayan feature film Seven Boxes won the inaugural Golden Feather Award with This Ain't California, Breathing and A Silent Night among the other category award winners. A bust of Captain Cook wearing a balaclava has won Jason Wing the Parliament of New South Wales Aboriginal Art Prize. The King's Langley residence work was chosen from a field of 136 works by 61 artists. Wing said the entry called Australia was stolen by armed robbery was intended to highlight the fight for land rights. Blacktown has the largest urban Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander population in New South Wales. 
Powerhouse Youth Theatre is celebrating 25 years of performances. Playwright Donna Abella ran the first PYT workshop in 1987 when the theatre was based at the then almost derelict Casula Powerhouse. Now based at the Fairfield School of Arts, the theatre has become a major creative force in Western Sydney, combining skills in acting, directing, script writing, puppetry and dance. The theatre will celebrate its birthday at Fairfield on November 8. And in sport, the Sydney Blue Sox opened the third season of the Australian Baseball League on Friday with a three-match away series to the Canberra Cavalry. Having reached the playoffs last year, new Blue Sox coach Jason Pospisil is confident of a first round win against last year's Wooden Spooners. A much better roster this year than we had the same time last year. Um, a good mix of veteran players, import players and, and young up and coming talent. So we're very confident going into that three game series against Canberra. To warm up for the baseball season, Pospisil and the Blue Sox board organised a three-game exhibition series against the Australian national team and their trans-Tasman New Zealand rivals. The Australia series was a, a raging success for us. Uh, we won one out of the three games, but as far as um, our performances over the three games we were really really positive and we had good crowds all three nights um, it gave us as a coaching staff a chance to see some of our new import players. The Blue Sox returned to Sydney on November 9 for a three match series in Blacktown against the Brisbane Bandits. And finally a Granville singer songwriter is well on her way to starting her own social movement. Mary Amber has been hitting the streets with a cameraman in tow, asking random loved up couples to tell her and the world what they think of one another. I've been filming the music video for my song The Loveliest Guy I Know by asking couples to volunteer a couple of minutes of their time to share their love with the world by writing on a whiteboard. I've been doing this mainly around Darling Harbour and Circular Quay at the moment. Mary Amber says the aim of her video is to put a smile on people's faces. It's been absolutely fabulous, just the huge variety of different couples that have taken the time out and shared their love. She's also collecting people's secrets anonymously for another music video. And that's all for this week's Bulletin. For more information on any of these stories, pick up your local Fairfax community newspaper. I'm Bianca Martins, we'll see you next time.